Hello and welcome to another edition of Back in Shape with T. I'm your host, Tarashe. Today, I'm going off the top of the dome, doing a freestyle, totally unscripted rant on who I think is the best eight-time Mr. Olympia bodybuilder of all time, Lee Haney. I believe he is the best Mr. Olympia of all time. Many people who've interviewed Lee Haney or talk about him on any consistent basis will always refer to Lee Haney as a humble ambassador for the sport of bodybuilding. Lee Haney was not humble. He was braggadocious and he had the right to be. Look at that body. Looks like something that was created in a toy factory. You can see all of the etched details from the chest, triceps. Look at the shoulders. Look at those deltoids. You've got lines everywhere. Feathers, striations. This guy wasn't 200 pounds. He was 200 to 250 pounds. Many people don't give him the respect that he is due. Check out that back. Start with the arms. Look at all three heads of the deltoids. Look at how the biceps, the brachialis muscles, the radial brachialis, and the triceps are all carved in unbelievable detail. Reminiscent of Lee Haney is a new and improved bodybuilder, Kai Green. Now we're separating these two pictures over 20 years apart and 20 years of much better technology in the drugs. Even in 2007, Kai Green's physique, particularly from the back, which is amazing nowadays, in 2007 was not as good as Lee Haney's was in the late 1980s. That tells you something right there. That tells you that if you transfer Lee Haney from this era in the 80s slash 90s or early 90s, because he retired in 1991, but the 80s rather, if you put him in today's bodybuilding climate with the technology that they have, his prowess would carry over hands down. You take an eight-time champion from that era with those type of gifts and you put him in this era and he will be the champion, no doubt about it. Look at the detail in both Dorian and Lee Haney. Dorian Yates looked like He-Man in this picture. An incredible physique. Nice deep. This is the best Dorian looked. And if he would have gained 40 to 50 pounds looking like this, putting muscle on in the right places without getting blocky, look at those etched details. Look at that separation. You can see the veins everywhere. That Dorian Yates looked like a toy. Amazing. Now you compare the two of them Dorian has slightly more etching and detail in the intercostals. Lee Haney is slightly fuller. That fullness wouldn't cost you points with that type of shape and conditioning. You can see the difference in their pec size is astronomical. But if I say Dorian Yates had this type of physique with more weight on his body... He would have certainly been probably a seven-time or eight-time Mr. Olympia himself. In my opinion, Arnold Schwarzenegger had the physique that I most wanted. I think that he would probably be my favorite bodybuilder. He's the type of body that I look at and say, man, I think women would love this. This is me understanding what a great physique looks like, but not really understanding the sport up until recently. When I say recently, maybe 10 years ago understanding why one guy beats another. I never understood why Dorian Yates was always revered by so many people about this mythical beast from England that has nothing to do with the way the body looks on a bodybuilding stage. This man looked like a Ferrari that was slightly dented in one era, area, slightly rusty in another area, no tire on another area, and considered to be the best bodybuilder in the world because of the mythical work ethic and the size he brought. We're not going to go at this over and over again, but it makes no sense. 
This is not the look that I would consider to be one of the greatest champions. I also think that most of, including Jay Cutler, were better champions than Dorian Yates. They had better bodies. Lee Haney brought a classic physique body to a 240 to 250 pound muscle frame. Compare that to these classic physique guys. Look at your Mr. Olympia champion, Breon Ainsley. Here he might be just about 195 pounds and absolutely not even as detailed as Lee Haney, who outweighed him by nearly 70 pounds. Look at your men's physique guys. Brandon Hendrickson, the 2018 Mr. Olympia, has to look good just standing there. He has to show quality, detail, and conditioning. That looks amazing, but it doesn't hold the candle to a man who outweighs him by 60 pounds. Look at those biceps. They look like granite. Look at the forearms. They look like you can see every single muscle fiber ever made up. In my opinion, John Hansen has the absolute best YouTube channel on when it comes to giving the legends their say. He has a legends podcast that he does on YouTube, which is basically documentaries. And he takes out a bunch of different bodybuilders and he goes through their careers. He shows you every detail. And when he had guys like Phil Williams on, they talked about the idea of what it meant to have to build a body from the ground up. Sure, they talked about using steroids, but they'll talk about bodybuilding as building detail. Using lightweights, Phil Hill, or Phil Williams rather, uh, famously said he'd only touch 100 pound dumbbells in the gym to move them to the side. A guy like Lee Haney was more concerned on packing detailed muscle on. When he said he did bent over rows with no more than 225, I was blown away. I understand that he could have done with 315 or maybe 400 pounds, but even a guy like Phil Heath won't do them super heavy. He believes in the stretch and squeeze, and that's in this era where everyone's throwing around 405 pounds for reps. I don't know if they're good quality reps, certainly impressive. So if you look at the details in this man's abdominal area, the small waist, the flaring lats, at that weight, if you put him in these eras, Lee Haney still wins. Unfortunately, <laughs> Ronnie Coleman is considered the greatest Mr. Olympia of all time. I cannot give him that because of the conditioning that he brought to stage. He could not control his abs. They were too blocky at some point. There were at least two or three Mr. Olympias where Coleman abs were unbelievably unattractive. Lee Haney never had that. Lee Haney managed to keep great size and great detail. If you look at this side chest, look at the way those striations go. It literally looks like somebody took a knife to his delts and sliced them. I thought this guy, Michael Lockett, would be the next kind of Lee Haney when I saw him back in 2005. As I look at him on these stages today, I hear that Michael Lockett, and I see because I follow him on social media, never gets out of condition. Beautiful conditioning. Nice, toned muscles. None of those lines and etches in his body like you find in a Lee Haney body. And that's this era versus the old school. The truth of the matter is, this Ronnie Coleman would have beat Lee Haney every day of the week. This Ronnie Coleman would have been Mr. A uh, Olympia eight times and been considered the greatest. This one, with all of those details and all of those striations, certainly is probably the only bodybuilder who I say had better gifts than Lee Haney. Amazingly, this Lee Haney would have been beaten by a 1990s Ronnie Coleman had he not let himself blow up so big throughout the waist, he would have been considered the all-time best Mr. Olympia, in my opinion. But he's not. If you're being fair about it, 
Lee Haney had all of the tools and quality to be considered the best over Ronnie Coleman. Sean Ray is somebody that every fan of bodybuilding will agree brought detailed and conditioned to every stage that he'd ever been on. His consistency was amazing. Striations, amazing. Cuts, amazing. But if Sean Ray is a 9.5, Lee Haney is a 10.5 on a scale of 1 to 10. He is a cut above even Sean Ray, who happens to be my second favorite bodybuilder of all time behind Arnold Schwarzenegger. But Lee Haney, as Mr. Olympia champion, is the greatest. It's weird. The only reason I look at a Sean Ray's physique and say, wow, I like this better, is because it's very aesthetic, very well proportioned, very well put together, not necessarily good enough to be the Lee Haney, but the Lee Haney physique for some somehow to me feels like unreal, feels alien. This doesn't feel unreal. This just feels like a human being did something extraordinary and perfect. This feels like unreal. It feels like gods came down, sculpted something, put it on earth, and made us look at it and seemingly unattainable before you got to a Ronnie Coleman. So, in my opinion, no matter what anyone says, Lee Haney is absolutely the greatest Olympia champion of all time. And if you put him in this era with this technology, he would still be the best.